Hi everyone, it's Josh Kinney again, and in this tutorial we'll be discussing extensions within Swift. Now extensions are pretty great because they allow you to take what's already a pretty elaborate uh, type, like a string in this case, and change it with methods to, be, to work for you. And what I mean by that is right here I have a string called cool string, and it's just set to this was fun. All right, and now with since it's a string, you can do a dot and find different um, variables, which really what they are is they're computed properties on Apple's side. You can't actually see Apple's um, code of how they're doing it, but you can click on it and see examples. For instance, if we do a count, I'll do it is empty, I'll do it uppercase, and then I'll do a lowercase just to kind of show you what these are doing if you're not familiar. But say I wanted to go in on this is empty and see what's going on. I can hold down command, left click, and then left click the jump to definition. And it'll go to the definition and it'll give me some pretty good examples. But it is not going to actually give me Apple's code and what they're actually doing to make this happen. Now you can go down that rabbit hole and try to figure that out. By all means, go for it, but that's not what this tutorial is going to be going over. So anyways, uh, my main point is you can access what's already there with these uh, properties. I'm going to hit play so you can kind of see what they're doing. Dot count saying 12 because there's 12 characters counting the spaces with this cool string. Is empty is checking to see if there's any characters, which there is. So is empty is set to false. If this was an empty string, we deleted that. This would be set to true. Uppercase, pretty self-explanatory, is taking all the characters and making them capitalize, and then lowercase is doing the opposite. Now, I told you that to tell you this. We can now do an extension of string and actually do some, we're gonna do a, uh, a, a computed property, excuse me, and actually um, add something to the string that we can now access and change the way we want it to work. Um, so what I mean by that is let's make a, a property called empty string and then we're going to set this to type of string and then we're going to do brackets again and then here we're going to say if self dot is empty and now you know what is empty is doing it's checking hey if this is going to be an empty string or not if that's true we're going to return a string that says no string left behind. All right, and if that is false, so if it is not an empty string, we're going to say, well, yeah, actually, we're going to we're going to leave you behind because we're going to set you to an empty string. All right, so we're going to do the opposite. All right, and how to access this? Now up here, you can see if I went to cool string dot empty. You're not seeing it. There is no, there is no empty string. There's it is empty, but there's no empty empty string. It doesn't exist. Now that we created it, we can take this down here. Oops, sorry. Um, I'll just type it out. Cool string dot empty string, and you can access it now because it created it. So in and if you're not familiar with this, in this Playgrounds, as you create things, that's how they show up. So up here, this doesn't exist yet in its mind. But now that we made this, anything below it can access this because now it's created. All right. Um, anyways, side note there. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in two strings. One's called my string. One's called your string. And my string is going to be empty your string is going to be set to this is awesome. Then we're going to do my string dot empty string and we're gonna do your string dot empty string to see what we get. So let's hit play here. My string turned into no string left behind because it was empty originally. Just like we said, hey, since it was empty, set it to this. Since your string was set to this, it was awesome. That is not an empty string. It went ahead and set up Yep, you're left behind because now you're an empty string. All right, super basic concept, but I want you to understand this never existed, and now in your code you can access this. So this works really well when you're working with integers. 
Okay, and let's say you wanted to make a computed property that gave you some wild logic to um, give you a certain number. Okay, let's say you wanted to do pi times 6,000. Okay, and then that's what, so whatever number you passed in, you wanted that to be times pi times 6,000. You could do that. You can do any kind of logic you want inside of there uh, with these extensions because they allow you to add on to what's already there. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on to the next concept. Let's comment out sisters and brothers to clear out the print thing down there. And then let's talk about actual protocol oriented programming. So protocol extensions give us default implementation for our protocol methods. So for, our, I'm sorry, for our own protocol methods. And what that's meaning is if you set a protocol, which you're gonna see in a minute, and it has a property and it has a function and you want to use that function but already be set with code so you don't have to type out anything any kind of logic every single time you use that protocol you can do that with an extension that's all it's saying so let's go ahead and look what look at what that means uh, but before then two things this allows us to use the types to conform to the protocol simply or easily and it also allows us to use that technique that I just mentioned earlier, protocol oriented programming. All right, so let's take a look. I have a protocol called set type. It takes in two very simple things, one property called name, one method called print name. All right, now if I was to go ahead and use a struct, actually before I begin, uh, if you're not familiar with that term protocol, I keep saying that and you have no idea what that means. I made a video right before this one called Protocols in Swift. It's the basics. I will link that in the description below. I highly recommend you stop learning this. Go and watch that. Get comfortable, get familiar, and then come back and play this from where you're at. All right. Anyways, let's make a struct here. We're just going to call this test and this is going to conform to that set type protocol that's above. All right, we'll go ahead and make the curly brackets and have it give us the error that, hey, it does not conform to the protocol. Let's add the protocol stubs. Boom. You do that and it, it'll add the name and it'll add the function. This is what I'm talking about here. We don't want to have to add this function in here. We want it already to be set and working. And you can't do that in here in the protocol, but you can do it in an extension. So if I go ahead and delete that, delete that, bring this extension up that I created. All right, we'll uncomment this and you'll see the extension of set type function. Now we can access this function and do logic. So we're just gonna do a simple print statement, but as you can tell, you can do whatever you want in here. Wanna put a loop, wanna put whatever you want, you can do inside this function. All right, we're just gonna say, hey, my name is name. And the cool thing about this is you don't see inside this set type this property of name because it's up here it can access it up here without real listing it or renaming it so it's going to say whatever we set for name my name is and then say the name so let's continue and actually show this i have a struct now and as you could see before actually i'm going to actually just write this out so we're going to say a struct just like we did and, and we'll, you know, we'll just name it test again, just to keep it the exact same test. And it's going to take in the protocol set type. And it's automatically going to go to this one then be like, oh, there's an extension to that one. It's going to take this in and you're going to see it all in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to have it alert us and we're going to say fix and boom. You see it, we no longer get that function at the bottom. All you need to take in is a name because we already set the function. It already knows what it's supposed to do. So there's no need in setting it here. It already knows. All right, so now let's make, this isn't gonna work anymore, but let's go ahead and do another one. So we're gonna say let Josh equal to test, do your parentheses and you'll see the name. And then we're gonna say Josh Kenny. All right, and now we're gonna go out and do Josh dot print name, because now we can access the print name because it's a type test, which test is taken in that protocol. That's how we can access that function. Now, what do you think it's gonna print? If you said Josh Kenny, you'd be absolutely correct. My name is Josh Kenny, because that grabbed it as, set it as the name, 
and then it says, hey, print my name is and pass in that name. So that's what we can do with protocol extensions. All right, so that's gonna do it for extensions. If you guys had any questions on the protocols, like I said, that will be linked in the description below. As always, give me a comment if you have any questions or if you'd like me to go ahead and cover a topic within Swift that you'd like to see, and I'd get to it if I can. If you like this, give this a thumbs up, hit that bell so you can see my latest, and of course, subscribe. Thanks.